Welcome back everybody, it's so nice to be back to you, I hope you've been enjoying so far these last 10 days, the first 10 days of 100. Well done everyone, well done everyone who's been doing it with me. I feel very happy that we're doing it together um, and thank you for all your messages. So, so please, if you want to tell me something, just make sure that you write it in the comments, either here or in social media. I'm sure your teacher has told you many times how to do it, but things change sometimes. We get different repertoire, or we just get confused, we forget how to do it. Sometimes, sometimes we just need more tips on how to structure the practice we have. And I will not be able to tell you exactly how to do your practice, because everybody's practice is going to be different. But I can give you an outline, and then you can talk to your teacher about it. I'm sure she, he or she will be very happy to talk to you about it. So, first of all, um, just to let you know, depending on your level, you know, if you're a beginner or if you're a Suzuki student and you're still in book one or book two, um, it's going to be quite simple um, and it's going to be quite well, um, it's easy to manage because you haven't got that many pieces of practice. Um, also, uh, you're going to be doing most of your practice on review and we can talk about the review in a minute. Um, but that's, that's going to be the main part of your practice review and then whatever you've been practicing on is going to be your, your challenging sections that we're going to talk about later. It also depends on how much time you have to practice. You know, some of you will have a lot of time to practice, some of you have a little bit of time, or it might be that some days you have less time than others. So depending on that, we have to adjust how we structure our practice. Um, it will also depend on how many things you have to practice. Like I was saying, if you're a beginner, you haven't got that many things, but if you're more advanced, you're going to have studies and you're going to have maybe a sonata and a concerto. Um, you might have um, different pieces for different performances, orchestras, you know, the list starts to get a little bit complicated. So we're going to talk about that as well. And finally, if you're preparing for something, like if you're preparing for exam or if you're preparing for... Um, an audition or even a concert. So that's going to be something that we can talk about. It. So before we start talking about the structure of the practice, I just wanted to mention a couple of things. Number one, really important, make sure you listen to whatever your teacher has told you to practice. Don't override whatever the teacher has said because of what I say. Try to marry both things and if it doesn't make sense together, talk to them. Talk to your teachers and let's see how you can find a way that makes sense and it's happy for everybody. Second thing is, make sure that, if, especially if you have many, many things to practice, don't just play through each one of them and that's it. Make sure that you choose at least one thing and you practice it in depth, which means practice it slowly, like one challenging section, practice it slowly and practice it patiently over and over and over and over correctly a few times in a row like I have taught in other videos. So that make sure that you get something out of that practice. If you have only a short practice, that's what you're going to do. You're going to make sure that that is your main focus. One piece, one challenging section, really in depth. The last thing is, however, however long your practice is, that you keep a focus during the practice. So whatever your teacher has told you you need to practice, on your left hand, make sure that you have a nice shape, make sure that your bow hold is, has a nice shape all the way through and is soft, make sure you have a good posture and you're not know, slouching. Um, whatever your teacher told you, I'm sure they are very clear about it. And if you're not clear, make sure that you ask in the lesson. Now, going into the actual structure of the practice. I, I see the practice in different blocks, in the same way that I do my lessons, is the same way that I would practice. So, first, some warm-up. Then after that, it's going to be some sort of technique. Whatever you've been working on, that's going to be your main focus, that technique. Then you move on to whatever the challenging sections that you're working on are. 
You do that and that's the bit that you're gonna practice more in depth. And finally, the last portion, number four, let's say, is gonna be other pieces or other things that you've been working on and you just want to make sure that you still play so that you don't forget them and then you're gonna carry on. Now, if you are a beginner or especially if you're a Suzuki student, um, you're gonna make sure that the first part, the warm up, uh, you do something like a review piece or you do a tonalization. Tonalizations are great for getting warm up and also to focus on sound, focus on intonation, slowly, patiently, opening your ears. That's one of the best things you do. If you don't know a tonalization yet, if you're not in book two, book three, if you're just at the beginning of book one, then just play one piece like Twinkle, really slowly, with a nice sound, and all the way through. Then you can always apply that to other review pieces. You can do two or three review pieces. And then you can go directly into what your teacher has told you to practice, whatever your focus is for the week or for the day, and you work on that. And stay with one thing. If you can see that there's something else that is going funny, don't worry too much, you're focusing on one thing. That's the most important. You work on that, you work on your challenging section, and then to finish your, your practice, again, you do another review piece, or something you have a performance, some of us might have to play for school or to play for your parent at this moment. You might, have, you might want to just play through something with a nice sound, with a beautiful performance. And that's also very important. Now, if you're a bit more advanced student, uh, I appreciate it's more complicated than that because you might have a few things to practice. And that's what we're gonna develop a bit more now. So, um, warm up, it could just be, if it's in the violin, it could just be working on the left hand or the viola as well, same thing. Probably the cello will be the same. Um, warming, on, warming up the right hand, so it could have different exercises for that. Could be just scale, could be scale with different rhythms. It could be so many different things. So um, just make sure that you know which warm ups you've been doing or ask your teacher what are the best warm ups for you. Then after that, we go into technique. Now, if you're a bit more advanced and you're already doing studies, or you're doing caprices, or any sort of technique-based piece that is not actually a performance piece, but it's just um, to work on one specific focus point, then that's the moment you want to do it. If you haven't got the time one day, maybe that's one thing we want to just condense and just work on a few bars and get those really well and then move on to your challenging sections. But it's important that you do a little bit of that, working on the specific bit, specific technique that you've been doing. Then we move on to the challenging section. That's probably the easiest one for you because everybody knows what their challenging sections are. I'm being really sure I suggest you just play through a piece and whenever you stop, you find something difficult, that's the bit that you need to practice. Or one of those sections. So instead of, you might have a piece, if it's a long piece, you might have a few sections that are challenging. Or a few boxes you're working on. So those boxes, those challenging sections, those are the ones that you want to do right now before you play anything else. So make sure that you practice those boxes first. Practice them, and once you get them right, you need to repeat them a few times in a row. I would say at least 10 times in a row normally makes the trick. Then we move on to the actual piece, put it in context, or you can move on into a performance piece, so something you're working on, like for a concert, like we said, um, or for an audition. Or you may have other pieces in the audition, um, which you already know, but you want to make sure that you keep playing them. So that's really important to do at the end. Practice your performance, practice playing out, playing, performing. That's really also really important, especially during these times that we might be online and we're just in front of a screen. Make sure that you perform. If you're a Suzuki student and you want to play for your parents, or maybe you want to put some teddies down and you can perform for them, something that is visual for you to play out. Make sure you have enough space to try and, and play out for those around you. 
Now, one last thing. For those people who have a few too many things to practice or they have a performance coming up, this is something I wanted to talk to you. Um, it could be at any level, beginners may also have concerts, so there's something that you want to think about. So, um, think about different pieces you might have. So, you might have one piece and then another piece and then you have a, a longer piece, maybe a little different, different color, a longer piece and then you might have some review pieces to do. I'll do it like this. So, we, have, we got four pieces, let's say. But it could be that you have, I don't know, a few more to go. So how do you manage all those pieces during your practice? And that's really important to understand. So that's why I'm saying we always choose something that is the challenging section from the one piece. So let's say this long piece, for example, has some tricky bits. So we're gonna make sure that this piece, we're gonna practice every time. And we're gonna practice the challenging bits first. Once you've done that, you can play this one in context. Now, uh, we have a performance coming up, so we have this performance piece, so we want to make sure that we play this one as well. If we have more time, we can also do these other two pieces. We can do them before or after, but make sure that it's not before the challenging section. Now, if you don't have it that much time and you've got all these pieces to play, what I suggest, especially if it's for a performance or for an audition, that you keep rotating the performance pieces. So one day you might do yellow and green, the other day you might do yellow and blue, the other day you might do yellow and red, um, another day um, you don't have a lot of time just to do yellow because of the challenging section. Uh, let's say this challenging section is over and now it's fine, so now we can rotate this one as well. Uh, we might just like to play, perform those three pieces that we have for the exam, one after the other, and then we, make, we can record ourselves and see which bits need working on. And then this will become the next challenging section for the next time when you have more time to practice. Now, just before a performance, let's say that we have all those pieces really, really well. Let's say we have four of them. Because sometimes we have four pieces to play, or it could be just that we have different performances or something. So instead of playing one and working on it and working on it, and then playing the other one and working on it, working on it, instead of doing one after the other in big blocks, like this. Instead of that, we want to make sure that we can play them properly from the beginning. That is for a performance. In a performance, we don't have time to work on them and then play them. We might just have to play in one concert or in one audition, all the pieces in one go. So what we want to do is put them at random, take them all out, put them in a box, and let's say, okay, let's see which piece is gonna come out. This one, you play it, you play through it, Whatever happens, you write down the bits that are not good, or maybe you have a parent there, you can, you can write it down, or you can record yourself. Then it's like, okay, next piece. Right, let's play this piece from scratch. Doesn't matter how well or how bad it is, you just play through, you do your best. Working on it will be a different day or a different time. If we're talking about performing, we're talking about playing from scratch, like in a concert. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope it's helpful. Let me know, please, in the comments if you need any help with anything with this or something else. If there's any topic in practice that you would like me to cover in the future, um, it's very helpful for me to know what you need so I can provide some advice if I have it or maybe I'll ask some, for some help from other teachers and they can also help um, you and everyone else. Stay in tune, keep practicing and I'll see you very soon.